We know we're a little bit late with our July wrap up, but as we always say, it's better late than never. I think this month for me was just a little bit rocky in both quantity and quality. I've read a lot of three stars. I think I only gave one book four stars. I only read like seven books. And this year I've been averaging like nine, 10 books a month. I'm gonna blame Love Island USA on that because I have been so locked in on that show. But now it's over. So this month I should be back to my regular scheduled book reading. I think I was actually opposite last month. I read a total of nine books, which is a lot for myself. And quality wise, I did give out a lot of four stars. So I had a really good reading month. And that's interesting because in July, we chose each other's TBR, which means maybe you know me and my reading tastes more than I know yours. But we have a lot of books to get through today. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. The first book I have here is The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I've been loving mystery thrillers lately and I gave this one a four star. Sally Hepworth is a new new author for me and I'm loving all of her books. I think this one is my favorite of her so far. This was less of a mystery and more focused on the family dynamics and all the secrets that were buried that slowly get uncovered. There's different couples in this book that we're following. All of the secrets were so juicy. Overall the story was just very entertaining. I loved seeing everything unfold. I love the POVs that we got and I definitely was not expecting the ending so highly recommend. I can't wait to read more Sally Hepworth books this year. The first one I have is this Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. This was actually the one that you guys picked out for me. In our July TBR video, we asked you guys to pick between this book and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And this one won by like double the amount of votes. And rightfully so, because this is a summer book. I was a little worried about going into this one because I did not love Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. I think I gave that book two stars, but this one was much better. So I think she has redeemed herself, but I still didn't find myself loving it. I thought it was a solid best friend's brother romance. I thought our couple was really cute together, but I didn't expect the time jumps. It was like we got them forming this connection and having feelings for each other. And then there's like a five year time jump and I just wasn't ready for that. I kind of wanted to enjoy more of the catching feelings side of it. And then towards the end, I thought things were getting a little bit too repetitive and slowing down a little bit, but I still did think these characters were cute. I liked all the side characters as well. So definitely better than Meet Me at the Lake, but still, I'm expecting a little bit more from her. I ended up giving it a 3.5, so solid read. Next book I have is Wicked Beauty by Katie Roberts. This was my blind book for July. This is the third book in the Dark Olympus series. Book one, I didn't love. Book two, I did love. And this one I think is my favorite so far in the series. Anytime I read a book in the series, I'm reminded how much I love the idea of a modern day Olympus. This one was super fun because we had trials. You guys know how much I love trials in like fantasy type books, so there was lots of action and I absolutely loved our love interests in this book. Overall, this was just a pleasant surprise. The plot was really fun. It was still just as spicy as the other two books. If anything, a little too much spice in my opinion. I wanted to get back to like the trials and the meat of it all, but overall I really enjoyed this one. I give it a 3.75 and I'm excited to eventually read the rest of the series. The next one we have is my blind book. It was actually Blackout and it was written by all of these POC authors. My favorite short short story in this was Tiffany D. Jackson's and she's actually the only author that I've read something by. I read Monday's Not Coming by this author and I really liked it. So I thought it was interesting that I gravitated more towards that story. But this is really cute because there's a blackout that happens in New York City and we're following like all of these different teenagers and how they're dealing with it and what's going on in their life like right as it happens. And I did find myself enjoying certain stories more than others. There was a few where I was just kind of like ready to skip past them and go back to that Tiffany D. Jackson one. But I think the concept and idea of this was so much fun. And we actually did find Wide Out in one of the last little free libraries that we went to. So that one looks like a winter read. So I'm sure I'm going to be reading that this winter. I also gave this one a 3.5. So solid read. I think I would have given it a four if I had gravitated to all of the stories, but I think 3.5 feels right. Up next, I have Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. This was such a fun, funny, relatable story about this girl's life. It had to do with relationships and dating and grief. It was very very humorous and raw. I definitely enjoyed it. I felt like I was just listening to a friend vent to me about her life. I absolutely love Dolly Alderton's memoir and I really enjoyed this one as well. I give it a 3.75. And this one has me really excited for her other fiction stories. I know I have good material by her and I think she has a couple other nonfiction books so I can't wait to get my hands on them. And this is one of my favorite covers. 
of this year. The next one I have is Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. This one was so cute. It definitely reminded me of one of my favorite duologies, Fable by Adrian Young. I think this one though, it just went by too fast for me. I think there was only like 200 and something pages in it. And by the time the book ended, I was fully invested and ready to continue, which is perfect because I do have that second book. But the concept was really cute. I loved where the story ended. So I gave it a 3.75 and I'll definitely be reading that second book soon. Following that, I ended up reading the third book in that same series, Vengeance of the Pirate Queen by Trisha Levenseller, and I absolutely loved this one. This was such a fun addition to the series. I read the duet a long time ago, and I was wondering how they were going to bring in a third book, but I honestly think she did it so well. I forgot how much I loved this world and these characters. I enjoyed this one so much. I kind of wish this was its own duet. I would have read another story about this particular plot. This book was just as magical and action packed as the duet was. This too had a little bit of romance thrown in it. I feel like there was a missed opportunity to have a love triangle. I know it is YA and like the actual plot is supposed to be like this pirate story and them going on adventures, but we were introduced to this other character, which I don't think we were supposed to root for, but I was. And if they would have made it a love triangle, I would have just loved this so much more. So if you have read this book, let me know if you feel the same way. This was overall just such a fun book though. I love pirate stories. I gave this a four star and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that she will eventually write more books in this world. The next one I have is Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q. Satanto. This was another super cute read from this author. I really loved the family drama and the romance in this one. There were so many funny moments that I absolutely loved in this story and I loved learning more about the Chinese Indonesian culture. I did end up giving this one a 3.5 stars. I do think that Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murders remains my favorite book from this author so far. Up next I have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was my first book by this author and a lot of people were saying this wouldn't be a good first book just because she has so many other books that everyone really loves but I did enjoy this one. I do like the fact that the entire story spans over one day. We're basically just following this family and getting to know each of the siblings and the parents the way they were raised and how that's affected them throughout their lives. This was definitely more of a character driven story. I myself do enjoy plot driven stories a little bit more but overall this was such a good book and I'm not mad that this was my first Taylor Jenkins read book. The next one I have is The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. This actually wasn't on my TBR, but Netflix ended up releasing the movie adaptation for this book. And Nicole Kidman is playing like the main character. And this was so much fun. I ended up giving it a four star. In this one, there's a bunch of people in Nantucket for a wedding that's happening. The night before the wedding, the bridesmaid is found floating in the ocean. And we're following everybody and we're going back in time to seeing what led to this girl being found in the ocean. The family drama was absolutely actually crazy. I love me a family drama. Every chapter just kept getting more and more intense and everyone started looking more and more guilty. Super good. I love Ellen Hildebrand and I cannot wait for this movie adaptation. Up next, you guys will be proud of me because I finally worked my way through another Zodiac Academy book. In July, I read Zodiac Academy book 8, Sorrow and Starlight, and this was just as insane as the rest of the series. Non-stop action, heartache, and smut. I'm glad I actually enjoyed this one because I know book seven, I was kind of over the series. I didn't know if I could continue. This one brought me back. I do still think we get unnecessary chapters, unnecessary POVs that kind of just make the story feel like it's being dragged on when I just want to be focusing on the bulk of the action. But we did get a lot of answers in this book and a bunch of stuff happened. I am currently reading book nine, so I cannot wait to finish off the series. I will say though, I skipped book 8.5. I heard it wasn't necessary. I know it was just a different po point of view of what happens in this book and I could not get myself to read it but I'm loving book nine. I gave this book four stars. I can't wait to finish. So the last two I have are ones that we read in our summer ween vlog. So I'm not going to go too much into them but this one is The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. This was my first book by this author and I honestly didn't love it. I think it was just a little bit too much of a slow burn mystery for me. It was like all the characters knew this secret and the reader is the only one who doesn't know what's happening and I like to feel included in my books that I read. I ended up giving this one a three star, but I think I am interested in reading something else from this author. I too read my first Maggie Miranda book this month and it was The Last House Guest. I read it in that same reading vlog. I think I had a little more luck with this one. I did enjoy this book. I liked the plot. I was actually shocked to see how many negative reviews this book got because while I agree it was not my favorite mystery thriller of all time, I had a good experience with it. I thought it was a really easy, quick summer read. This 
was a small town mystery. We had two timelines. We're trying to figure out what happened to this girl's friend, but I gave it a 3.5. I thought it was pretty solid and I too want to read more Megan Miranda in the future. The next book we have is our Literal Besties book club book and we read Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose. I thought this was a solid and fast-paced mystery thriller. I did find myself enjoying the first half more than the second half. I think this one started to feel a little bit repetitive and like I just wanted answers. I didn't think the twist was anything crazy or shocking like I wanted it to be. I ended up giving it a 3.5 stars. I do think I enjoyed The Perfect Marriage from this author more. I did give this book a three star. Not my favorite book club book that we've had but I think the only reason I had a weird experience with it was because I had read a mystery thriller book in the past that had the exact same twist and ending. So I definitely predicted it early on and I was waiting for it to be something else. So when it ended up being what it was, I was a little bit disappointed, but still a solid read. I liked seeing everyone's predictions. Solid book club book for the summer. Last book I have for today was also read in that summer ween reading blog and it is Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. I absolutely love this book. I think this was the most shocking book out of my entire July TBR because I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did, but it was a creepy witchy fast paced book that is perfect for spooky time. I believe I gave this book a four star as well. Okay so these are all of the books that we read in July. My favorite was definitely The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. I think mine was the Sally Hepworth book. That one was really good. So solid reading month for us. Let us know what your favorite read of July was. Reminder to join our Literal Besties book club. You guys picked Assistant to the Villain. So that is the book that we are going to be reading in August. The link for that will be in the description. That is it for today's video though. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you guys next time. I loved the Fine Family Don- I loved the Fine Family Dynamic- Dynamic? <laughs> Fine Family is insane! <laughs> you were mixing Family and Dynamic. I love the Fine Family Dynamics! I said, whoa! I think the Fine Family Dynamic- <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I'm done. This is the book that I like brought with me inside Bucky's and you know, Yeah, like, oh, yeah. How did you bring your book you inside? Bring it I was everywhere. like, it's that good. Hi. Look at you. Hello. Come on in.